Okay, Algebra 2, Lesson 65, we're going to talk about using the quadratic formula. What's nice about the quadratic formula is that it will solve any quadratic equation. Okay, it's not the fastest way, but it will solve all of them. So if we get into one that we just simply can't factor in our heads, that it's not working, or if we're factoring um, a quadratic equation that has an imaginary number in it, we're not going to be able to factor it any other way than this way. Okay? Yeah. Yeah. The comment was is that I used this the other day for one of the questions in, in one of the lessons. And yeah, you can definitely use this. So in general, a quadratic equation in standard form is AX squared plus BX plus C. Obviously not necessarily plus plus like that. It could be plus minus uh, minus minus or any kind of combination there where A does not equal zero. Um, the quadratic formula is also really nice when uh, there's something else in front of that x squared besides 1. Right? It gets really complicated when we have anything else in front of that because when we go to factor it, that means one, of, one or both of those parts of that factored form have something else in front of the x, which is going to change how everything operates. So the general equation can be solved for x by completing the square with the last line creating what is called the quadratic formula. Now, what your book does uh, in the beginning part of Lesson 65 is it shows you all of the steps for basically taking the quadratic equation and turning it into the quadratic formula. Uh, let me show you what that looks like. Okay, These are those steps. Okay, so they're taking that AX squared plus BX minus C, and they're, they're completing the square. So um, they divide everything by A. They move C over to the other side, so they subtract it, divide everything by A. Uh, then they complete the square. So you're taking that B over A. Um, you know, and you're, you're doing all kinds of crazy stuff until you finally get all the way down here. Oh, that's not what I want. It won't let me draw on it. Okay, but you're getting all the way down to the quadratic formula. Um, a lot of times there will be a question that says, you know, derive the quadratic formula from the quadratic equation. I am never going to make you do that. Okay? You're welcome. It is a complete and utter, and I'm putting this out there, I think it's a complete and utter waste of time. Okay? Doesn't mean that you shouldn't know how to complete the square, but for the most part, what you really need to know is what is the quadratic formula, okay? It is one of those formulas that at this level in math, you should memorize, okay? The quadratic formula is negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. I cannot tell you the number of times where it has come in handy to have memorized that because there are so many times where the quadratic equation cannot be solved just simply by visually factoring it. Okay. Usually the second I see that there's a number in front of x squared other than 1, right? I'm just going to go straight to the quadratic formula. I'm not going to waste my time trying to figure out, you know, uh, what things multiply by what things and how that changes and operates. And I end up erasing the same thing over about four times before I finally come up with the factored form or find out that it won't work and that it's an imaginary number or something like that or an irrational number. Okay. All right, coming back over here. So the solutions of the quadratic equation, uh, ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0, where a does not equal 0, are given by this formula right here. And that will let me write on it. Okay. It is something that you should get to know closely. Okay. Like I said at the beginning of the class, I had... Um, People raise their hands or nod their head that had seen or worked with this before. I think just about everybody in here has. Is that correct? All right. Do we understand where the A, the B, and the C come from? Okay. Of course, you know, we've got A, B, C as derived here. The other part that I want you to understand is that negative right there. It does not mean that it's always negative, right? It means the opposite sign of whatever is in here for B, given that B in the quadratic equation is positive, it's going to be negative in the quadratic formula. Does that make sense? Okay, so that this negative right here, 
is not always negative. It depends upon what the value of the B already is. Now, this negative right here is always negative. Always. Okay? You don't change that. Okay? And we will always have plus or minus right here. So the only thing that can change is that negative that's sitting out front can become positive depending upon the value of the B. Okay? Any questions about the quadratic formula up to here? Okay? So the quadratic formula can be used to find the solution of any quadratic equation, and that's what's nice about it. Okay? Because the solutions of a quadratic equation are the zeros, the x-intercepts of the equation, okay? Keep in mind when we're dealing with a quadratic equation, we're most typically dealing with something that looks like this or like this. So if our x-axis looks like this, okay, then what we're seeing is we're seeing solutions here, 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 or here, depending, okay? That's what they're talking about whenever we get two solutions. Now, there is... And I don't know if uh, this is quite necessary to get into today, but we'll go ahead and talk about it, that there are different possible answers for a quadratic formula. Okay? We could get a quadratic equation that looks like that. Okay? That's going to have two solutions. Okay? And we see a lot of that. That's probably the most common, is getting two solutions. We also have the possibility of getting one solution. Okay? We get one solution when our quadratic equation has a square root of zero. Okay, let me come kind of come back over here so you can see it real quick. Um, if I get a square root of zero in there, then what I have is I have a real number plus or minus nothing over a fraction. Well, now I have plus or minus nothing. I don't have to include. I no longer have two options. I only have my B over my 2A. Does that make sense? Right? So basically what we're saying is that the vertex is on the x-axis. Okay? And we also have a possibility where my quadratic equation does not touch the x-axis, in which case there's no solution. Okay? That's where we're going to get an imaginary number. Okay? Those instances are where I have a negative value under my square root. Because can, I mean, what's the square root of a negative number? Imaginary, right? It's going to be I something, which means it's not actually going to touch that x-axis. Does it exist? Yes, when well, we can look and find a graph of it, but it, we can't find a solution for it. Okay, so that's kind of all making sense a little bit to some degree or another. Like I said, some of this information is beyond where you guys are going to be today and have to work with, but just so that you understand that stuff when we get there. Okay, all right, let's take a look. Um, 65 over here. All right, so here's an example of a quadratic equation where I have something other than 1 sitting in front of the x squared. So explain to me, Allison, uh, with this information here, what would you, um, how would you write up the quadratic formula? Okay, so you're saying negative 4. Okay, so problematic so far, okay? Our problem is, is that our formula starts off with negative b, right? Okay, plus or minus. Now, you did what probably a lot of people are going to do, so don't take this personally, but 4 here doesn't represent b. Okay, what, what number represents b in my quadratic equation? Negative 1. Okay, this is B. What is my A? 4. A is 4 and C is 5, right? So it might help to start off with A is 4, B is negative 1, C is 5. So I don't start inputting things wrong. So I'm actually glad that that happened because there might be other people in here that would have that tendency. And we've learned collectively a lesson that somebody else in here might have made. Okay? So if we have this, let's start over. Can you 
Okay. Good. Negative one, good. Negative one. Hold on. I'm missing a part. Squared. Squared, yes. Very good. Okay. All right. Uh, let's see. Eric, um, my first step, granted, um, I'm going to handle the easy things first. So I'm going to get the one plus or minus all over eight. Okay, but handle the square root in here for me. What's negative 1 squared? 1. So now we have 1, and then I handle the, the whole other section. So negative 4 times 4 times 5, which is really what? Negative 16 times 5? Okay, can anybody tell me what? Is it negative 80? It seems right. So I'm getting 1 minus 80, right? Is that correct? 1 plus or minus negative 79 over 8. Okay, 79. What kind of number is that? Um, the negative part of it makes it imaginary, but the 79 is prime. Prime. I, I don't think we can take anything out of 79, can we? But we do need to take out the i. Okay, so this is 1 plus or minus i. Radical 79, now you're going to see uh, something significant uh, here is that we can put that i in front of the square root or we can put it behind the square root. You are pretty much always going to see them draw it up with it behind. Okay, The answer is not any different. Okay, Questions? Relatively simple. Okay. All right, let's look at number two. Number two just wants me to solve this using a graphing calculator. So, I mean, we're going to plug in, we're going to go to y equals. y equals should be upper left-hand corner of your graphing calculator. You need one. Okay, if you don't have one, come and get one so you're familiar with how to use it. All right, y equals, now you're going to type in x, you guys know where x is, okay, then you should have, oh, you've already got it all in, okay, and then you should have your x squared, you guys see that on the left hand side, okay, uh, plus 4, x minus 5. Okay, now you can hit graph. You should, uh, should see a quadratic equation. And it's going to look something like that moved over a little bit more to the left, correct? Yeah. So we're looking for this value and this value here. Now, it's hard to determine exactly what that is from the graph sometimes, isn't it? Can you guys tell what those numbers are? Negative 5 and 1. Negative 5 and 1. It's a little easier to see from our options up here that it's going to be D. But let's say that, I mean, are those answers always going to be nice, neat, you know, uh, integers? I can hit second table, right? Or you. And so, what am I looking for whenever I hit second table? I'm looking for what kind of zeros? Where should I see zeros at? No, not zeros of x and y, just zeros for... No, just zeros for y. Because the x-axis is y equals zero. So, I'm looking for the numbers in the x position where y equals zero. So if you hit second table and scroll through, you should find the number negative five zero and one zero. Is that true? Okay. They're not going to be right next to each other like this. Okay. 
So I could hit second table and look for where does y equal zero at. Now the downside is, is that your calculator is typically going to just give you the integers, right? It's not going to really give you decimals, okay? So if those are anywhere other than an, an integer, you might have to go back to that graph and kind of scroll, and then it's going to give you a decimal at those points. So we do need to know how to do the math. Does that make sense? Okay. Let's see. You guys are out of here, what, 36? Okay. Got three minutes. Okay, is there a question from your homework that you would like to see done before we leave? Or do you guys feel like you got a pretty good handle on how to use the quadratic formula to solve the quadratic equations? F? Okay, there you're just using a graphing calculator like you just did. Now, one of those numbers is going to come out all nice and neat. The other one's not. So for that, you're going to want to go into your graph. Do you know how to use your cursor to move over? Okay, and put it on that point where it's crossing the x-axis at on the negative side and try to get that as close as you can. Okay? All right, I'm going to stop right here.